What's going on, everybody? Dave here from ClientAmp.com, and you're watching That LTD Life, the series where I review lifetime deals to help you grow your online business. You can always count on an unbiased review from me and make up the decision about whether or not this deal would be right for your business. Today, I've got my sights set on my signature. This is over at AppSumo. You can see the lowest price plan is $39. Now, on the surface, this is an email signature tool. No big deal, right? It's just one of those little messages you see at the bottom of every single email from that person in HR that has to have their photo on every single email that you receive from them. I'm not a big fan of those if that message didn't give that away, but I know that they're popular and people still tend to use them. Now, my signature is not just doing that, apparently. If you dig a little deeper into the sales page here, you can see there's actually a lot of features making me think, why did they call it my signature? Of course, we'll get email signatures, but we're also going to be able to track email opens and clicks. And according to the overview, it says we can collect reviews. I don't see that mentioned anywhere else in the sales page, so I'm very curious how that works. Now, if we look at the plan details, you'll notice we get something called a My Page. Depending on the plan you get, you get a certain number of My Pages. I assume that's gonna be maybe a page you can take people to and ask for a review, but we'll find all of that out as I try out the tool. Now, important with this one, tiers one and two, kind of obvious, you're just getting more users. But with tier three, it becomes basically a hub for your agency. So if you have clients and you want to offer email signatures to your clients, 159 bucks, you're going to get a hundred different users on a hundred different pages and you can have unlimited companies. So you could segment these out on a, you know, a client by client basis, maybe charge them per signature and they're going to have individual accounts. So you'll be able to actually allow them to manage their own signatures. That is really intriguing. I have had clients ask for help with their email signatures. And honestly, I usually just code them up via HTML. But if I had a tool that I could resell to them, maybe that would be more beneficial, especially if it added extra features such as click tracking. Now, notice that the click tracking only works with Gmail. I think we're gonna be able to use the signatures with most email platforms, but the click tracking opens and clicks is only with Gmail, which is kind of a bummer. I'm not sure why it would work that way. I also noticed that we're going to get a custom C name to improve email deliverability. That is really interesting. I don't know how they're going to do that and how exactly I feel about it, but hey, let's go ahead, dive in and give it a try. I'm going to grab tier three so we can try out all of the features here and let's get going. All right. I am activating my account. You can see they're going to redirect me over to their partner site. Let's go ahead and get signed in. All right, here we go. I am now logged into my account. The very first thing I see is a little pop-up here asking me to show my support on AppSumo and they're essentially offering me a free signature to do so. I don't know how I feel about that. I think, um, you know, incentives for leaving reviews is probably just not the best look, especially when it's the first experience you have with the company. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna close that for now. Uh, different video probably, but something to address in the future. So as you can tell, the interface over on my signature is very, very bare bones. There's not a lot going on here. Left-hand sidebar, we've got our signatures and we've got our pages. We're going to look into both of those in this video. Then at the top, I've got some notifications. There's not even a bell, just a number of the notifications with their latest changes. The most recent change was that custom domains are here. We'll be checking that out for sure. And then I've got my account settings up here. Let's check that out before we dig too deep into the, the tool because I want to see right here, they've got the custom domain. Let's figure out what that's all about. It says, brand your signature links, make your signatures website, images, and social media links display your custom domain. So that's really interesting because most people already have a custom domain for their business. So I'm going to go ahead and try this out and see how it works, but I have yet to fully understand the utility. So all we need to do is grab this CNAME record here and then enter in a subdomain right here after we create the record on our DNS provider. So I'm gonna use Cloudflare and I'm gonna go ahead and just add in a CNAME record here. For the name, I'll just go with SIG and then paste in the target that they provided me. Since I'm using Cloudflare, I will turn off the proxy and hit save. Quick note, if you're using something like GoDaddy to do something similar, you don't need to turn off any proxy. You don't go hunting for any settings. That's kind of a Cloudflare specific thing. All right, now over inside of my signature, I'm just going to enter in the domain name that I used on Cloudflare and hit verify and save. Still says pending, so we'll check back on that. It does say it'll take up to 72 hours to verify. Most DNS settings on Cloudflare do not take anywhere near that long. So we'll have to check it by the end of the video and figure out what exactly is going on with this. I assume this is for some sort of link tracking. 
that the links inside of my signature will link off to a tracked link. And that is all that this is about. But we'll have to definitely investigate just to be certain here because they don't really mention that this is for link tracking anywhere in the custom domain setup section. All right, now on to the meat of the matter here. Let's go ahead and create a new signature and I can choose a template. It looks like they've got quite a few here to choose from. Like I don't mind the email signatures on say the very first email that you receive from someone, but after you've corresponded like 10 to 15 times in the same thread and you look at the replies and it's just all loading their image over and over again, I find that really distasteful. So I think a best practice here might be included on the initial email and then any replies, turn that signature off. Email clients should build that in as a default setting, especially when you're writing like one word replies like, yep. And then it's just like the big block of text with images and links and everything. All right, I'm gonna go with this look right here because I think it's pretty sleek, minimalistic. Uh, I definitely would not want some of these larger layouts. They're just a bit too big for me. So I'm gonna use this template and let's go ahead and update it. All right, so I just filled out my name, the name of the company and my position. There's also a field here for department. So let's say I said, design that would show up right next to the name of the company, but I'm going to delete that. And then over here, we've got our contact details so I can enter in my email, my website, and my phone. If I wanted to add more here, let's say I had, oh, I don't know my address. That's a good one. We could put the address in like 555 Main Street, and that's going to show up as well right over here in the preview. So overall, the interface here is really nice and slick, you know, it looks pretty good. There are free tools that will build something like this, but I think this looks high quality, probably a step above what I've seen from other free tools. And, you know, it's always good to have uh, kind of something that's branded to your own domain. If you have other information you need to include down here, let's say you want to like list your book, you can do that and then give it a name over here along with a link. All right, so I just uh, created a fictitious book and I linked over to Amazon. So if I were to hover over on this, it would turn that into a link. So that's a pretty nice touch. You can really customize these templates uh, to a large degree. Obviously, you're going to be limited based on the starting point of the template. So if you don't like this overall layout, then you just swap it out for a new template. You can preview up here what it's going to look like in dark mode and light mode. I'd say that that color doesn't really work for me too well in dark mode, but uh, I'm sure I can change that in a moment here. There's a design tab we'll get to. Let's go over to the image section. I'm going to replace this image with my own. All right, I've got it uploaded here. I can crop it however I'd like. I'm going to go ahead and just make this as big as possible and hit apply. Oh, I thought it maybe it would crop it into a, a circle. Let me go ahead and try that again. Oh, I see there's options down here. So if I want it to be a circle, I can choose the circle crop and then I can resize this to go edge to edge. And there we go. Now I've got my circle look. All right, that's a pretty nice interface. I'm impressed. And I can also turn my image itself into a link. So maybe I want this to go over to our homepage. So if people don't go over to the website, this will also work as a link. There's an integration here with Canva. So if you want to add a banner, you can click over and design it inside of Canva, or it looks like they have a gallery. So let me check that out. All right, so we've got a list of holidays here. So if you're running sales or something, you could do that. Let me see if I can find anything that's relevant. All right, let's do this one here, kind of a tech support vibe cropping it out by default. So let me grab all of it and I'll hit apply. Now notice we could upload our own banner here as well, but I'm going to use there. Uh, all right. So that's getting pretty big for me, but that's what it looks like. So now we can test it out. I can change the width, make it a little bit more reasonable. In fact, you can make it downright too hard to read if you prefer. And you could also change this into a link as well. So if I wanted to make it like a telephone link, I could do that. All right, so interesting here, I use the HTML for telephone link and it says enter a valid link. However, if I hover over it, my browser, if you look in the lower left hand corner, it understands that HTML. So I think this should work. I'm going to try to save it and just make sure it would actually update. All right, so I've got it saved here and it took me to the next screen on how to actually install it. I'm not quite ready for that. So I'm going to go back and yeah, it looks like it saved it OK, even though it still says enter a valid link. I think the link saved, so we should be good here. I do notice that after saving it, all of the URLs have updated to have their URL inside of it. So it's not using my custom uh, tracking link. Maybe it's time to go ahead and double check to see if that has gone through yet. So go back to account settings, custom domain, and let's re-verify this. Uh, it still says it is not verified. Just double checking everything here and make sure I didn't make any mistakes. So I'm using a tool called whatsmydns.net and I entered in my subdomain over here and using CNAME, it tells me that the value is what it should be. So everything has actually propagated, but for some reason, the My Signature tool has not checked yet is kind of my assumption because it refreshes so quickly that it didn't actually go out and do any sort of verification. 
All right, we'll proceed with working, but be pretty certain at this point that this is basically link tracking. So if you're trying to choose a C name, you might want something like link.yourdomain.com or something even more brief than that. All right, so I'm back in the signature section. I want to get in here and edit a little bit more because we've not seen all of the different sections. We left off on images. I think we hit everything there. Let's go over to social. Here we can choose which social networks we want to link to and then add in our own URLs. So if you want to send people over to Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn, you can do that. There are a plethora of icons down here for different platforms. I am not even going to begin to claim that I understand what most of these are. Let's see if there's tool tips that would be helpful. Yeah, it is. Okay, so here's Redfin. I recognize that one. There's one called Elo, Medium. I honestly didn't even know that's what Medium's logo was. I just think of black and white text when I think of Medium. We got a Flipboard logo. So yeah, you can probably find whatever logo you need to link out to on this list of icons. Probably one of the more diverse ones I've seen in terms of just a wide ranging. You know, if you're an artist, you want to link over to your Spotify or your Apple Music, you could do that. If you're selling products on Amazon, you could link over to there. Yeah, just nicely done here. Now you'll notice that all of my icons in this section here are kind of the brand color, but when they display over in my actual design here, they've taken on a different color, which I assume is going to be set up inside of design. So we'll check that in a moment. So before we go to design, we're going to go to add-ons and it looks like we can have a bunch of different add-ons here. First one is a sign off. If I click on this, I can choose a different sign off. So if I want to say sincerely best, uh, regards or some sort of custom text, you can do that and then choose the font family that you'd like to use. Maybe make the text a little bit smaller and you can even change the color here or you can even write it by hand. Now I probably would want to do this on something like a smartphone to actually get it in there decently, uh, but there we go. Hi, I'm not going to sign my signature on a YouTube video. You think I'm crazy? You'll know, check out a target in my name. Do you remember back in the day you actually had a sign for credit card transactions? All right, so I'm going to remove this. I don't necessarily like that, but it's cool that it's there. It's not just not for me personally. We've got a disclaimer section where we can add in um, some disclaimers. This is great for like real estate agents, lawyers, things like that. Um, you probably need to do that. There's a bunch of uh, oh, data protection. There's a bunch of templates here. E-commerce, GDPR. Oh, this is cool. This is a nice touch. And then you can add your own custom one in here if you've gotten uh, your lawyer or your uh, LLM lawyer to write something up for you. There's font size, so by default, it's set to extra small. We can make it small or not small. That one does have a name, medium, there we go. And I can change the width or maybe make it auto width, which is gonna be like the full length of the container there. And I can change the color if I wanted to make it blue and gaudy or maybe red, whatever you wanna do. For now, I'll turn this off and we'll proceed to the next section. We've got social, which is gonna be another way to present our social icons. So I could add in, let's say a Twitter link, and that adds a banner down here. You could really make your signature just absolutely gaudy and awful. Please do not use all of these features at the same time, people. I'm making me very nervous. There's options for shaping these as well. So by default, it was just a rectangle. But I can make it a rounded rectangle or even a circular pill type of shape. Although that's more of a circle is what I was expecting. Change the size. Let's make that a lot smaller. Give it some more padding. All right, pretty nice. Again, don't use all of these, but it's nice that it's there. Like. If you're going to use these, don't use these. All right, let's see what else we've got here. We've got links to video conferencing. So you can choose your platform form here from Zoom to Google Meet, Skype, go to Meeting and Microsoft Teams, and then add in your link. So you'll see you just get that little uh, Meet Me on Zoom icon down there. We can change the background color, oh, brand color is selected, turn that off, and then we can change the background color, change the text color, and again, the same shape options we saw before, as well as the ability to resize and add in some padding to kind of space it away from our other elements. All right, next we have green message. Let's see what that is. We want to add in some kind of environmental message. Please consider the environment before printing this email or uh, these are just different icons. And then we have a few different template messages. Uh, please don't print this email. That one sounds a little bit fishy. Uh, <laughs> save paper, don't print. All right, that's better. And then you can add your own custom message as well. I could see that would be appealing to certain people. Again, I think this is just a, a lot for a signature, but uh, I can see how it would be appealing. All right, we've got four more here. We've got a CTA, which is uh, basically going to be probably, you know, a sign up for my webinar, buy my course. Yeah, here we go. I can add in, basically, this is just a button, right? I can add in some text, choose an icon, add a link, change my typography, style my button, 
and the same options we saw before in terms of changing the size and the padding. All right, that's pretty cool. I like that option um, just to like flat out add a little sales pitch right into your email. That's cool. So again, what you could do is just go back to the social section over here and then just get rid of these if you're going to use all of the other buttons. All right, I'm going to turn off the CTA. In fact, let's turn off this banner as well. And we'll go back over to our add-ons. Just a few more to look at here. Event and calendar. So this is going to be like book with me, little calendar icon. All right, so I just filled out the information here. You can see it says book with me and then the CTA is limited slots available. And then I've added my link in. So if I hover over any part of this, it's going to open up my tidy Cal uh, booking page. Well, I have to actually click. I can't just hover over it, but the click zone will be anywhere on this line. Two more add-ons to check out and then we'll finally make it over to the design section. We've got our marketplace over here. All right, so we can link over to more shopping. I like this. Uh, we can add our Amazon products, our app on the App Store, your eBay store, our Google My Business, and our app on Google Play. All right, that's a really cool feature. And if I add a link in here of any kind, that populates the banner over there. Same styling options as all of the other banners. A few different color options, by the way. We can just use white or gray. And last but not least, we've got my page, which we have not checked out yet, but it says check out and refresh my page, your link in the bio and personal web space. So this is gonna be a link in the bio section essentially that we get included with the deal and we can add that to our links over here. So that's really cool. I will have to uh, go ahead and set that up. Yeah, because right now I don't have any yet. So let's go ahead and save this signature. Oh, we got to check out the design section. What am I talking about? All right. So in the design section here, you're going to get a list of different fonts and colors and sizes, and you can change everything here kind of across the template. So I'm going to choose impact and let's make the font a little bit. Uh, geez, you can hardly read that because it's a very bold impact. Uh, oh, you know, what I was thinking it said it's inter. It doesn't impact looks like that. Now we're not going to get a huge list of fonts here because these have to be email save fonts. And that's a lot shorter list than just like your standard Google fonts that you might be used to using for your business. So you'll have to probably make some compromises uh, in terms of not using your specific brand font, but that's an email thing. That's not a my signature thing. All right, I'm going to choose Trebuchet MS and let's go ahead and play with the font size here. So you can see what it looks like real small, real big. We can change our template color and that updates all of the colors that were set by default. The one that didn't change is over here. And I think that I had a choice for that. Yeah, custom field styles right here. Yeah, and I can change that independently. Let's say I made that. Obviously, I'm not doing a design here, folks. Uh, we've got purple and pink. I can make that bold or, oh, it looks like by default it was bold. So I can turn the bold off and turn off the italic if I'd like. I'll leave both of them on for now. And then we have the options to change our colors for social icons. I've already deleted those, but we can go with the branded colors over here or outline colors over there. So I just turned them back on so you can see what this looks like. So let's go to branded colors and then let's go to our default color that we can, or not default color, but kind of the selectable color that we want to choose or turn it into an outline. Now when I do outline, it disappears because I have the icon color set to white. All right, so I made them quite a bit bigger so we can see those outlines. I think that's probably the worst looking one, I guess across the entire template. That was probably the worst result that I saw. Overall, everything looks pretty nice here. So let's save this signature. I'm going to come back and get it installed. But first, I want to check out the My Page so we can really round out exploring the options inside of the Signature Builder. So over to the dashboard, we're going to go to My Pages over here and let's create a new page. All right, so we've got some ready-made templates. First one that catches my eye is this one right here. It says Casual STD. They might want to rethink that one. All right, so we've got one up here for a dancer and an influencer. There is Bag Bliss, shop online for women. There is an opera singer template. There is a photographer template, real estate or home rentals, beauticians. Overall, I think they look pretty nice. There's a singer template. All right, I'm going to go with this one right here, Wade Russo, podcaster and presenter. So I'm going to choose use template. And there we go. This is what it looks like. I can change my name. All right, let's go with YouTuber and course creator. And then I'm going to choose my image here. Looks like something is loading. So I'm just going to X this out. Oh, there we go. I finally was able to select it. Now I'm going to add in my own image, upload. Now this image does not have a, a background to it. It is transparent already. So I'm going to choose the area that I want, kind of frame it up a little bit. All right, there we go. I've got my image framed up how I want it for now. I can change the image size. This is as large as it will get. I can shrink it down a little bit. Not too huge of a difference there. 
Oh, there's this uh, kind of full width look as well. So that's a little bit weirder because then I've got this kind of preset ratio with the selector and I can't necessarily get it exactly how I want. So like what I'm, what I'm saying is like, it runs into the left-hand sidebar. I can't move left anymore, even though it looks like there should be some space over there that I can kind of center up my, my face a little bit because it looks off-centered a bit to me. Then I've got my page URL down here, and by default, it's mypage.io, and then I can add in something like Dave Swift and hit Save Changes. Now, that URL should be updatable if I could ever get my DNS records working. So here it is on mobile, and here it is on like a tablet or maybe a desktop view. You can see we've got some buttons, some social media links, and then contact links, links down here, along with my email at the bottom, and then their branding. I should be able to turn off that branding, I believe. So let's look at the settings here. I won't go quite as comprehensive as I did inside of the signature builder, but we've got our buttons. We can add those in, easily remove or add new ones as you like. Social icons, the same grid that we saw before. Messengers, that is new. Well, it slid me out of the way, so I can add in my messengers. That shows up down here at the bottom. Let's see what options we have. So if we add a button in, we can do Messenger, Telegram, or Viber. And then contact details, it's email by default, but we can add it in our phone, our address, or our hours of operation. We have the option for marketplaces down here. That's gonna be similar to what we saw before, I think. So let's say I wanna add in my Amazon link. I could do that and say amazon.com. And there we go, it shows up down here at the bottom. Now I should be able to move these around, I think. These look like they're movable, but when I click, nothing actually happens. Oh, I can drag them around. All right, so let's say I wanted my Amazon link to be at the top. I could just drag that up there, and there it is. It shows up right under my name. And obviously, you could add in any title you want here. So you'd be like, my widget with an Amazon logo. People will know that's where they go to buy it. We've got a video conferencing link. Again, very similar to what we saw before. The same integrations that we saw before. Let's choose Zoom so we see what that looks like. And here it is down at the bottom. Again, drag and drop where you'd like it to go. Now, unlike the signature builder, we can't actually change the color of this zoom link. It seems like we're kind of stuck with that. Although there is a block design and a theme section coming up. Well, we already saw the theme, right? So there's a block design section coming up. All right, the last option is for social media. We can add in our social media here. Let's say Facebook, Pinterest, and YouTube. Why not? And here are all of those social media links over there. Now, these will be grouped together, so you can move them around, but they have to stick together. I think you can move them around. It's not moving. All right, there we go. Yeah, so we've got this big block of social media up here. All right, so here is the finished product on mobile. You can see it looks pretty good. I'm gonna go over to block design and I can uh, modify most of what's going on here. And interestingly, the background does not seem to be something I can change. So if you did not like that red look in the templates, but you like the overall layout, I think you're kind of stuck with that from what I'm gathering. So we've got a general block style shape that these are gonna be the blocks. So let's say I wanted more of a pill look then they all update to a pill look. Or if I wanted rectangles, I could do that. Turn on and off the shadow. And button design, it looks like this is on a case-by-case -case basis. So for example, my widget over here, which is a marketplace, um, I'm gonna make that colored because the default color matches the background. Let's say I made it, oh, another lovely shade of purplish blue. All right, I can also change the social media icons. Let's go over there and I'm gonna use the brand color down here and then I'll update all of those to be the brand color. Or I could just make them plain text, it looks like. I have to turn this off, then turn text, there we go. Then we have social icons down here. There's some options for those. You can see what they look like. I can resize them, make them smaller or maybe just a hint bigger. And we can choose between that outlined look, which I don't like, I'm not a personal fan of that. Black and white, as well as the brand colors. Of course, you can customize the icon color as well, as long as you leave it over here, where I said black and white, we can make that be anything we want. But I'm gonna go with brand colors. All right, so I'm all done with this. I'm gonna go over to the theme section over here, and lo and behold, I can actually change the background color. So what I just said before, not accurate. Let's try a different background color. All right, these are looking better already. Maybe I was just tired of looking at that red. There's kind of a Christmas theme with all the red buttons I got going on. I could also select my own colors here. So maybe I want to do something kind of more Black and white, let's try that. Got three color gradient going on. Obviously not designing this folks, just uh, randomly choosing options. All right, next up we can choose a different type of gradient. By default it's on linear. If you wanna go with radial, you can do that and then you can rotate it around. Nope, that's only for linear. So with that we can rotate our uh, gradient around the screen a little bit. So maybe it's mostly black and at the bottom it kind of just tapers off into gray. We can change our fonts here. We've got more options because now we are not encumbered by email. Let's go with Montserrat. 
that's our title font. And then we can choose Rubik for our text font. I wouldn't choose that pairing, but you can see that you have different options and you can change the overall color of text as well. But I'm gonna go with white. And it's not too late to change your theme. You can do that as well. Um, some different options over here. Whoop, that just clicked me over to another screen. So um, don't do that, I suppose. Oh, it did also update the theme itself. Very odd. Here's my casual STD. I can't believe I just said that on the internet. That's right, so kind of nice. I can just flip through some of these different templates and just see if any of them look a little bit more exciting to me. Um, for some reason, when I click them, they're actually taking me to live links. They should really disable those for the preview clicks. All right, I'm gonna go with this look right here and let's go ahead and, oh, I can turn off the branding right there because I bought the plan that allowed for that, which I guess all of the plans allow for that. Even tier one allows no branding from my signature. So you will have that option even if you only spend $39. In fact, everything I've shown you should be available for just $39 with the exception of the custom domains. Uh, that would be for link tracking, which again, they have not specified very well. Yeah, so just to clarify what AppSumo says here about getting a custom domain to improve email deliverability, the idea here would be that if you have links in your email from your own domain that you're sending from, that's going to look a lot more legitimate than if you have a bunch of tracking links throughout your email from a kind of unknown service. No offense to my signature, but I don't think many people have heard of them. So it'd be more likely that the my signature links would be flagged as spam than your own domain, which you know you might have been sending emails for 10 years with that domain. So those will be more known to ISPs. Because yes, the contents of your email affect your ability to hit the inbox, but that's a lesson for another day. All right, we're gonna move on here, save and publish success and i've got my url i can check out what this page looks like or download a qr code to allow people to scan it and then visit and book with me or do whatever i want to share with them here's what the page looks like on my desktop browser i never changed russo's uh, email down there but everything looks functional and good i didn't make these real links or anything but uh, you can see that yeah it's a decent looking kind of link in bio page all right back over to the dashboard let's visit our signatures one more time here i'm going to edit this and you know, I didn't go over to the template section thinking that was just going to allow me to change the template I was on, but maybe I have to investigate that. But for now, I'm going to go to the add-ons, choose my page, and then I can go ahead and I've got my page link right here. And essentially, let's see, I can add an icon in. So I can choose this icon and add a little message here, like find my important links or whatever you want to do. Change the size, padding, and color. I suppose there's no reason you couldn't add that in line with your other social media icons. Let's say you just went over to social media here and you did something like a link icon, which I think I saw right here. You could just paste in your My Page link there and then people will be able to click over to it. Or you could add as a custom field. You know, this is very flexible. You could do whatever you like. So custom field, my links. Yeah, it would look something like this. So I've got bio link and then important stuff. So that looks like that right up there. And then the link it's going to go to is just that URL I copied from the mypage.io. All right, so we still have a little bit more to do with this tool. I did not expect this to be such a deep dive into a signature tool, but there's a few more things we need to take care of. First, I'm going to save this and then let's go over to our account settings and hopefully we can get that custom domain verified. No, it's still not working. I wonder if they're not doing this manually. Like if this is a new feature, they may have not built it completely into their system and they might have to actually just integrate these kind of one by one. No knowledge here, just speculating. But the few things I was mentioning that we need to wrap up are to install this and then I need to check out the link tracking and uh, review gathering. There's something about review gathering on AppSumo, so I need to figure out that. So let's go ahead and click the install button here. I get those directions I saw before. And here are the different platforms I can use. I can use Gmail, it looks like Outlook. We've got Apple Mail, Yahoo, Thunderbird, your iPhone, your iPad, so just the Apple Mail application on that. Slightly different instructions. Outlook.com this time, or Office 365. And then we've got just the raw source code here so that if you use a different application, you can gather that as well. I assume these are gonna be the same things over here. It says copy to clipboard versus this. Copy to clipboard is probably the same. Success messages doesn't go away. No success messages for that. Now on Gmail, there is this option to use their extension to do the installation. So that's how I'm gonna proceed just so we get kind of the full experience here. Cause I think a lot of people are gonna be using Gmail that watch this video and they might wanna see how that works. 
All right, so I'm now over inside of Arc, which is essentially a Chrome-based browser. I'm gonna install this extension over here. It takes me to the Chrome Web Store. I'll add this to Chrome. I'm signed into my account using my signature. All right, and it says, it seems this extension is currently disabled for this account. Try to switch Gmail accounts. Make sure you've connected your signature to extension. Visit the guide. All right, so I think what's happening is that I'm trying to use this extension on a Gmail account that's different than my user account with my signature. So what I'm gonna to need to do is check out how I add more users to my account so that I could have everybody have their own login. Remember, I bought tier three of AppSumo, which means I have the agency hub section where I can add as many users and companies as I wish. So let's dive over there first and we will get to installing this and checking out click tracking in a moment. So here's the My Signature website. I'm gonna click on Login, and you notice here we've got My Agency Hub, Solution for Agencies and Resellers. I'm gonna click up there, and I'll hit Login. And now I'm in the Agency Hub, and I can add a company. So let's do that. Let's hit Add Company. Our fake company will be called The Widget Man, and we can assign a certain number of signatures to them, so they can get, I don't know, how about three signatures? We'll add some admins here. I'm gonna add my Gmail account, give them permissions to create, edit, send, duplicate, and delete signatures, and I will add the administrator. All right, so that's as easy as it is. I should be able to check my Gmail account, then get logged in and go ahead and populate my signature, publish it on my account, and we can check out the last feature, which is gonna be tracking email clicks inside of my signature. All right, so I hit add company there and I get this message, the company, the widget man has been successfully added and now I would assume I'm going to receive an email on my Gmail account to tell me how to log in. This is like a separate user, essentially. And here we go. Yeah, I did receive that email. I'm going to accept the invitation. I probably should log out of my existing account first. Accept the invitation. So let's create an account. I'll sign up. And there we go. It says I have zero of three signatures. Perfect. Uh, this looks really good. So I'll go ahead and hit new signature. All right, we'll skip through this because you've already seen the editor, but I'm going to go ahead and make a decent looking signature and then I'll import it into my account in Gmail. All right, so here is my signature. Now, interestingly enough, it does not say to install with the extension on this particular signature. So boy, if this doesn't work the way I want, ah, steam out my ears, but I think it will. So I've got the extension installed in Chrome and then I notice there's the my signature icon up here. I can go ahead and let's log in. Okay, so perhaps I only get click tracking for my main account and the sub accounts do not. That's what I think is going on. Okay, so I'm signed back in as my primary account. I'm going to delete the widget man. It's like there's no way to entirely delete the company. I can only delete the users from it, which is I guess fine, but it'd be nice to remove it entirely. I was searching for a way to remove the account entirely. I am in the account settings up here. I did notice there's the option to add admins. So if you want more people to be able to add your you know, companies, add your clients, you can like add in a remote worker here. If you've you know, got someone else on your team that's gonna be doing that, you could add them in over here and that will help uh, offload some of the burden. But yeah, I don't see any way to actually remove this account at all unless I'm missing an obvious button. I find it a little weird. There's not a link between my signature and the agency hub. It's literally the same login, but there's not a link to go between the different sites. So off we go, I'll log into my signature. And then what I need to do essentially is just update my email here, probably on my account level. All right, so I've updated my email to the Gmail account. One more time for that custom domain, no luck. Back over into Gmail, I'm logging in with my original credentials. This time it works and I can turn on tracking emails and use my signature. All right, and I can see the signature right here. It's just linking me over to the My Signature page. Let's try writing an email. All right, now I do see the My Signature logo down here. When I click on it, it says that the tracking email and signature are not enabled. So I don't know, it looks like I saved this, but it didn't work. So, all right, there we go. Now it should be on. All right, I'm gonna send this email. All right, and I got the email, but there was no signature attached. So something didn't happen quite right here. All right, it says, please make sure you've connected your signature to the extension. So I'm gonna click on the signature button over here. And there's this little button over here that says update extension. So I'm gonna click on that and that should actually add the signature over into Gmail. Let's see if that worked. We'll create a new email and there we go. Now my signature appears. So that was the secret sauce. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and hit send. 
Here is what the signature looks like on the other end. And now I should be able to tell if this has been opened. I'm going to click on some links. Let's do my, uh, you know, link page over here. And now inside of Gmail, anytime I've sent an email that has link tracking on, I'll see this little icon up here. I can see how many times it's been viewed when it was opened and any clicks that registered. Now, interestingly, it didn't register any clicks, and that's probably because I was using Safari. And as you probably know from their latest birds aren't real campaign, Safari blocks a lot of tracking. So um, that's probably why it's not registering. I'm going to open this same link up inside of Arc and see if it shows up. So I'm just going to right click on this link, copy it. And now I'm inside of Arc. I'll open it up. OK, so what I noticed is this is the link that I copied and it's not a tracking link at all. So maybe I'll try another one on the email. All right. Here is the client AMP website. We're loading this up. This is inside of Safari. All right. So I tried opening Safari. Still no link clicks. We'll get to the bottom of this. I'm going to open up that link. This looks like a tracking link to me. I'll do it right inside of Arc and then we'll go back to Gmail and still no links. All right. So I don't have a ton of faith in the click tracking. At least it's not real time. Since I was just complaining about there not being a link between the agency hub and the signature section, uh, I did notice that if you don't want to create accounts for people, you can actually just add members right over here. So they'll live inside of your primary account. So this would be for probably internal users to your company. You just hit invite member and you add the email address, choose their permissions and they're ready to go. All right, so it's time to wrap things up. This video is definitely a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was a short little simple signature tool, but it turns out there's tons of features and I think there's a lot of value hidden here. I really like the ability to offer this to clients. However, I wish there was the ability to also offer the click tracking to clients. It seems like that is turned off, but I don't see it stated anywhere. Also, no mention of gathering reviews. I think that was just something that AppSumo has on their sales page that may be incorrect because I couldn't see any mention of it anywhere inside of the application. So I'm going to give this one a 7.2. If you want to pick up a copy, I've got a link down below. That's my affiliate link. Help support the content on this channel that doesn't cost you anything extra. By the way, you should also check out clientamp.com. That's where you can find my premium courses. You can sign up for my free email newsletter or even work with me and my team directly to help grow your online business. My name is Dave Swift. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next review.